hello everyone so in this video we are going to discuss how to make a uh, amplitude modulator using pn junction diode so this video is going to be a bit longer because we are going to discuss the theory as well along with the circuit so i hope that you know the, know the basics of uh, amplitude modulation so suppose we have a message signal mt and a carrier signal ct that the dsps cm signal is given by am mt into ct and the general am signal is given by mt into ct plus ct right then frequency domain is given by this so i think you already know the we have done the fourier transform of the signal and seen uh, how to do this if you have not studied the theory of am i request you to go through some book or some online resources and study the basics of amplitude modulation so this is the basic uh, general am signal the this signal that we are going to make this general am is the signal that we are going to make now let's look at the spectrum suppose this is the baseband signal or message signal which is from frequency fm to minus fm because when we represent a signal in frequency domain using fourier transform we get a this kind of a representation where we have a positive frequency and the negative frequency right and we have the carrier for carrier also we have this fc and minus fc so when we do the general am we get this kind of a spectrum so this is the fc uh, the positive frequency and the negative frequency so basically we have the mainly these frequency components fc fc is the carrier frequency and we have the fc plus fm so which is the uh, upper side band and fc minus fm which is the lower side band so basically at this point the frequency is fc plus fm at this point it is fc minus fm at this point it is minus fc plus fm and at this point it is minus fc minus fm so this kind of a spectrum we get uh, when we do amplitude modulation now this is the transfer function of a pn junction diode so let's see our main circuit is going to be a pn junction diode the diode can perform amplitude modulation so this is something interesting now how the diode can perform amplitude modulation that is interesting right so suppose we have a diode and in the input of the input of the diode we have a signal xt and at the output we have a signal yt what will be the transfer function what how yt is related to xt right these two are voltage signals we are not talking about the diode equation or the whatever current valve versus voltage wave that you see in case of a diode but we are looking two voltage signals one is the input and one is the output one common example is the half wave rectifier here if it is a sine wave in the output we get a half wave rectifier signal right so in this case the xt will be the sine wave and yt will be the half wave rectified signal but how to represent that mathematically so we know that the diode is a non linear device right since this is a non linear device so we can say that we can model a, a non linear function and we can say that somehow yt is related to xt using this equation if we can properly set this a and b the terms then a and b can be positive as well as negative if we can properly set this a and b then we can model the behavior of the diode using this equation and you can try to model the output of a half wave rectifier from this signal using this equation and it can be done by properly selecting a and b we can actually get the output of a half wave rectifier using this equation now this is the main circuit that we are going to use okay here ct is the carrier signal and mt is the message signal so the mt plus ct they are added mt plus ct is given as a input to the diode and in the output we have a signal called yt right mt plus ct so how can we find the yt so here xt is mt plus ct so yt will be a x square t plus b x t so a into mt plus ct whole square plus b into mt plus ct so if we expand the a plus b whole square formula a m square t plus a c square t plus twice a mt into ct plus b mt plus b c d so this is the signal that we will get now what are the frequency components of each term let's see this is m square t so if we have the m square t 
so if we have a signal m square t then its frequency will be twice fm so by applying fourier transform we can prove this but again i am not going to do this in this class secondly we have a signal c square t similarly if m square t we have frequency twice fm for c square t we will have frequency twice fc right what is the third component third component is twice am t into ct so twice am t into ct this has the frequency component so it will be again the convolution of mf and cf so by applying the fourier transform we can find that the two frequency components are fc and fc plus fm and fc minus fm so these are the two frequency components so you can try this yourself now the next, next is mt so mt will have the frequency fm and ct will have the frequency fc right so these are the frequency components of all these signals now if we pass the signal through a bandpass filter with center frequency fc what will happen if we apply a bandpass filter with center frequency fc then let's see one by one the frequency this is twice fm and we know that in amplitude modulation the frequency of the message signal is much smaller than fc right fm is much smaller than fc so twice fm will also be much smaller than fc so this will be gone next this is twice fc twice fc is double of fc this is much much bigger than fc since this is much bigger than fc if we apply through a bandpass filter this will also be gone now if we look at this mt this is the frequency of fm fm is also much smaller than fc so if we apply through a bandpass filter this will also be gone right so we will be left with only two three frequency components fc fc plus fm and fc minus fm right so the final signal is this one twice a mt ct plus b into ct now what is the bandpass filter so the bandpass filter you have studied bandpass filter in using opam but we are not going to use that actually we are going to use a lc tank circuit as bandpass filter there is a primary reason for that uh, because opams are not very good for handling high frequency and since we are doing a modulation our input will be already having a high amplitude so sometimes it is difficult to handle this kind of signal using opam so we are not going to use a narrow band bandpass filter as you have studied in opam but instead we are going to use an lc tank circuit so lc tank circuit works like a bandpass filter whose cutoff frequency is given by this equation f not equal to 1 by twice by root over lc so this is the resonant frequency of the um, lc tank circuit and at the at this frequency it will be a pass band because it is easy to understand because see if because we know that the inductor allows low frequency to pass and stops the high frequency and capacitor allows the high frequency to pass and allows and allows the low and stops the low frequency so in this way if the frequency is higher than the cutoff frequency it will be bypassed to the capacitor if it is lower than the cutoff frequency it will be bypassed to the inductor but when it is resonating then this behaves like a short circuit so for a, for a very narrow band this allows the signal to pass so if we take l equal to 1 milli henry and c equal to 1 microfarad our cutoff frequency will be uh, around 5 kilohertz so you can do the calculation and see let's now design the circuit so for that i have any the schematic the schematic editor of pspace so i need a diode diode i shall share now see there are many diodes but we are going to use this diode this is one and as well as this is the diode rotation 1 and stands for stands for silicon diode and 2 and stands for germanium diode and all the diodes available here are silicon diodes 1 and 4148 so this 4148 is the diode number and 4148 is a high speed diode which is used for modulation so i use this diode this diode is our modulator it's so simple just the diode now I need the voltage P sign. So this is the P sign and this is the P sign. 
let's say this is our carrier signal PC and this is our message signal PM right now and its registers are And I need another register for because we are making an adder and when we make an adder it is good to have another register and this should be a bit bigger than this so just like adder using open that you did so I connect the circuits by joining wire I press control plus W plus then I connect the wires like this everything should be connected just like any other circuit okay so we have done the connections of this side now we have to make the bandpass filter for that we will need an L inductor I press ctrl R to rotate it and I need a capacitor again controller to rotate it okay. so we connect the circuit like this again this is connected to this point then I need another register for the RL load resistance again controller and we need the ground the response should be our ground so this is our circuit now for the carrier signal our offset is always zero whenever you set a V sign offset should be always zero amplitude should be let's say 5 volt and frequency should be 1 kilohertz oh sorry frequency should be fc fc should be equal like because here we got that our fc is 5.03 kilohertz so let's make it 5 kilohertz this 5 kilohertz and for the more message signal here also the offset must be zero amplitude should be let's say 2 volt because the this will have a smaller amplitude and frequency let's say 200 hertz okay now we have to see the signal so for that I have to set the transient uh, okay so for the message signal is 200 uh, hertz message signal is 200 hertz so if it is 200 hertz then time period will be 1 by 200 so 1 by 200 1 1 by 200 is 0 0.005 that is 5 millisecond so let's make it bigger than that let's say we do it for 5 millisecond let's make it for 24 millisecond and we do the simulation okay so we have to save this first so I have to make a folder let's see what output we get ok so what is the register output register let's name it RL the load register 
then we have to see the voltage across RL, RL is to 2. Okay, so to some extent we have got a AM signal, right? But the voltage, voltage is very, very small. So why is it so small? Okay, so I have not yet said the this should be 1 milli Henry and this should be 1 microfarad, right? 1 milli Henry and 1 microfarad, as we have seen here. 1 milli Henry and 1 microfarad. Now we do the simulation again. Yes, this is the sine wave or M signal, right? We have got we have got a beautiful M signal. So for comparison, we can uh, plot the PM plus. So if you compare this, so you can see when this is increasing, we can compare this like. Or there is another option to compare because see there is a difference between these two because the maximum voltage is one volt and this is here the maximum voltage is just uh, two here the for the message signal the input maximum voltage is two volt and there is some attenuation in the circuit and we are getting so what I can do is for comparison address P R L is to two this one we have already got. Here the maximum voltage is one volt. So what we can do here is that uh, PM plus oh sorry, PM plus zero point five into PM plus. So now you see, we can actually compare them, right? So if it is increasing. This is also increasing even see the stress, right? So we are getting a very nice stress. Okay. So we are getting a nice stress. Okay, so this is the AM signal. Now what we can do here is then we can calculate the modulation index. So modulation index is given by AM by AC. So our aim is given by aim is two volt and AC is the carrier amplitude is five volt, so it is given by 0.4, right? And practically, if we see, practically it is given by P max minus P min by P max plus P min. So what is the P max? So you can see here. Uh, let me just trace, delete all trace, trace, uh, trace. PRL2 okay so we can zoom in using this so if we zoom the maximum part what is the maximum voltage so V max is your around so you can see point between point 0.8 and 1 so point 0.8 and 1 volt so we can say this is around point 0.9 volt right P max is around 0.9 volt. So our P max is 0.9 volt. And what is P min? Click here. You can click here. This is P min. So what is P min? P mean this is 400 millivolt that means 0.4 and this is around 0.2 right P mean is 0 0.2 0.2 volt so now if I apply this so 0 0.9 plus 0.2 so 0 0.9 minus 0 0.2 will be 0 0.7 divided by 0 0.9 plus 0 0.2 will be 1.1 so there is some error there is always some error so you can calculate the percentage error but we are getting the modulation index to be 0 0.6 around okay so that's the case but still we are getting the output you can do it for various other voltages like 
if we change this voltage now if we apply if we increase this voltage let's say it is 2 volt if we make it 3 volt VRL is to 2 So you can see the shape becomes small. Now it is over modulated. If we make it bigger than this, so this is 5 volt. If I make this also 5 volt, so you can actually see the over modulation, under modulation, all the all the problems in this circuit. So this is critically modulated. And if we make it bigger than 5 volt, let's say 7 volt, now we should get over modulation. Yes, there is a phase shift and we get a lot of distortion. So this should be small, then we get a proper modulation. Let's make it. Let's say 2 volt. So now we should get proper modulation. Yes. So this is all about amplitude modulation. Now if we want to demodulate the signal, right? the opposite of modulation is demodulation. So what we have to do? We have to use another diode, the same diode, same again directly type D1 and 4148. So I need another diode, right? I need another diode if we want to demodulate the signal. This is how we demodulate. Now, if we see, if we want to see the output of this, let's say another resistor. Let's make it okay. And see what happens. Let's name it RL2. So, if we want to see this RL2, so you see our signal is slightly demodulated, right? Because we are getting this is briefly, this third is now working like a half wave activator. This is working, working like a half wave because if you compare the two, PRL is to 2, so you see here, although this is highly attenuated, this is highly attenuated, but we are getting it. In practice, what happens? We have to in when because it is a simulator, so it is working. But sometimes in real life, we may have to add an amplifier here because the signal is highly attenuated. If it is so much attenuated, then this diode will not work because this is a silicon diode and this should not work over uh, below 0.7 volt, right? But it is now working only because this is a simulator. If we don't use an amplifier, practically this will not work. But still, we want to see this uh, output. For now, we can just increase the voltage a bit. Let's make it 10 volt and make this, let's say, 5 volt and see if we can see any difference. P 
3 RL2. So, slightly it is increased because we have increased the voltage and we are getting a better signal. Now, in the last step is we have to use another capacitor here. And remember our FC is 5 kilohertz, right? FC is 5 kilohertz. So the cutoff frequency of this should be so such that the cutoff frequency of the F cutoff should be less than 5 kilohertz and this should be greater than 200 hertz. So, if we apply R equal to 1K and C equal to 1, 1 micro Henry, micro Fatal, then we know that this will give us an FC of 1.59, around 1.6 kilohertz. So, we can actually use this. So, let us make it 1 micro Fatal. Instead of nano Fatal, I will make it micro Fatal then we will see what result we get across RL2. See, this is the demodulated signal, right? So, we can compare this with the original signal. the input signal PM plus. So, although this is not properly working, but to some extent we are getting some results, right. Okay. So, we are getting some demodulation, although this is not working properly actually uh, what happens here? This capacitor bypasses the high frequency part and we get the low frequency part here. So, this is how this circuit works and also there is another explanation for this the charging and discharging. So, I'm, I will not cover this in this video, but you can uh, study it from some book and this is how the AM modulation and demodulation works. So, with this thank you.